guys welcome back to my channel so i'm currently away i'm staying at a lovely little cabiny cottage area and enjoying my week away and i haven't filmed a video in a while and i really wanted to film a video before i left on what i've learned from one month of freelancing it's actually been more than one month now it's been over two months but i really wanted to talk about a few things that i learned and i thought actually why not do it while i'm here okay so i moved locations because I'm not alone here. I'm with family and <laughs> they were talking. Although there's a problem with that, I'm having a great time here. But yeah, I wanted to try to piece this video together as best as I can and I thought it'd be nice to show the perks of freelancing which is being able to go away and travel and work from wherever you are. So that's the positive and I'm also going to talk about some of the downfalls or tough things that I learned through the last few months of freelancing as well. So. With that, let's get into the first point while I'm filming right now. The first thing I realized while freelancing for the last couple months is that you have less free time than you did when you worked your nine to five. A lot of people say that before you go into freelancing, but I don't think I realized how much until I started. Setting up the business itself takes so much time that really you should be working on it on your weekends too and you shouldn't really be having that much time off. And it's great because usually it's like, well, you tend to go into the business of freelancing on things that you enjoy, at least I know I did, with design work. So that part I really enjoy, I really le enjoy learning, but I definitely have way less free time than I ever imagined. I say that though as I'm traveling now and get to stay at a cottage while working, so that is great. But you know, it takes work and um, I think I had more free time when I worked nine to five because you can shut off at the five o'clock mark and be like, that's it, I'm done for the day. Freelancing. It could drag on forever and you're never really done, especially while you're starting off and trying to set up a business. So you spend a lot of nights working on things. And really, I have been slacking during the summer, but I should be spending more time on weekends working on it too, just to get it started. Along those lines, I don't have anything automated or system set in place. And I really recommend that to anyone who does start freelancing. I think it really helps when you have these systems so that you don't have to be relied upon for your time 24 7. I think the light is changing as I'm talking to you guys. So it's kind of cool. But um, yes, I think those systems are really important to put in place because then hopefully over time it will be a little less time consuming and you can, you know, take it easy on some things. So I really want to set up some systems in place to help me with my business. So I to, I'm actually restarting my computer right now. I was working this morning. It's just acting really slow with the spreadsheets I'm using. So I'm going to take this time to continue the lessons that I learned. The second point I want to talk about is that the time struggles you had with your 9 to 5, this is for people who are probably leaving their current job and want to go freelance. I found that the time struggles I had with my 9 to 5 are mostly the same even with freelancing. So for example, I think I had it in my head that if I could structure my own day around work, like I got to set up my own schedule, I would be this consistent gym goer. I would go to the gym in the morning. I would have time to paint more, time for more hobbies. And the reality of that, at least for me, is that it was pretty far from the truth. And if anything, I think I've gone to the gym less because my structure can vary. And as I mentioned in the first point, I end up working more now than I did with my nine to five. I probably go to the gym even less and the things I found hard to do with my nine to five, I find just as hard or perhaps even harder now that I have um, a freelance schedule. So yeah, making time for these things is just as hard, maybe even harder. And my advice for this is just to be realistic. You know, if you're struggling with these things while working a nine to five, most likely, at least for me, um, you'll find them just as hard, if not harder, working in the freelance schedule. So just something to keep in mind if you're thinking of switching to freelance, if you think it's going to be like more time to do things that you love and you'll be better with your schedule, it might not always be the reality. So this might seem like a really random spot to continue this video, but I love this Airbnb and how cute the circle mirror is with the claw tub. So <laughs> I'm gonna continue in here, but my third point is that networking has never been so important plus social media for um, Myself personally as growing a business and freelancing I find Connections are just everything and I wish I'd built more of a base of connections and network before I started freelancing I think it's really important because finding clients is not easy especially to start once you get your first few um I think it really helps, but you know, the client I have currently for the year is through someone I know, 
it's really helped because I think they just naturally trust you more when it's word of mouth and you can have someone kind of back you up when you're first starting out because you don't have a lot of work experience or business experience to show as proof for um, what you can deliver. So really, really important to start. So your circle can really help with this and social media growth could also help with this. And I think social media is such an amazing tool. And I think if you can figure out how to leverage social media to grow your business, then you're set. And I know myself personally, you know, with YouTube and Instagram, I need to be putting more work into it because I think there's just so many more opportunities when you can reach more people through social media. And that's something I really want to focus on this year. But that is just another point that I really noticed while freelancing for the last two or so months. Okay, so one of the last points I want to go over with um, in regards to what I learned while freelancing the last couple months is don't be ashamed to and definitely um, if you need to pick up part-time work. That's what I do. I'm currently working part-time as a liability analyst. I think I mentioned that in my last design diaries video where I talked a little bit more about that. But it really takes the pressure off when you're starting your business or starting to freelance because you're not gonna start off with a bunch of consistent clients and it might be hard to make as much as you may have made in your previous job or it may be hard to self-sustain if you're straight out of school on just your freelance work. And I think it's more stressful because you're gonna rely on that to you know, make ends meet. So one, I think when you leave your first job, you should have a good amount of savings before you go freelance if you can. Um, that will take pressure off. But two, if you can, why not do some part-time work, you know? Because it's still going to give you time to work on building your freelance business. But it's also going to take that pressure off because you're going to have some consistent income coming in. So for me, I know it's going to give me time to get some systems in place to automate things, make things easier for myself, to find more clients. Yeah, and get all the background work in place. Like, so setting up your website, all these other things. If you didn't do it before you left your work or your previous job or school, this could be a good way to have time to get that done, but still have income coming in from your part-time job. So that was also something that I learned through um, making this transition myself and one that I wanted to mention in this video. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up the video with this last point as I'm actually working on some part-time work right now, which I know I mentioned in my last point, which is doing some part-time work uh, with your freelancing as it does make it a little bit easier and less pressure. So anyways, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actually finishing that up, but um, just wanted to talk about the last points before I finish today's video. And that is I've learned while freelancing that it's best to simplify your finances. This may be like the worst quote ever, but I do kind of remember. I mean, I'm reading this book at the moment. I haven't, I haven't gone through it again recently. Is um, Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. I don't know if it was, a, maybe it was a seminar or something I listened to online. But anyways, it said one of the ways to win the game is to live simple. That was one of, I think he had five factors. Again, I'm so sorry if I'm getting this wrong. But anyways, it said lower your needs and you'll be financially free quicker. And I think this is really important with freelancing because you're going to take more pressure off, your, off of yourself, just like part-time work takes the pressure off. By living a simple life or simplifying your life and not being, um, not feeling like you need to make as many finances to live your usual life, that actually really helps as well with taking that pressure off. So live below your means and if you need to, like simplify your life. I mean, I don't know how much you spend currently, but maybe figure that out. I know of myself, I really just put everything into Notion and check how much I'm spending each month. And obviously I've been shopping less, <laughs> but on things that I don't really need, I've just been simplifying my life a little bit more. Because you gotta think about what's important to your life. Is um, it important to have a more flexible schedule working freelance, but maybe less money to start? Or is it more important to you to be able to, I don't know, get your nails done every week or what's another expensive thing? I don't know shop online more <laughs> because then maybe freelancing isn't for you especially to start off you might want that nine to five job because you know you're gonna have that pay and be able to do those things so yes i think that with freelancing if you're careful with your finances you'll start finding the freelance work easier because there will be less pressure and that was the last thing i learned from freelancing the last couple months and the last thing i want to share with you guys and I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it wasn't too all over the place while I'm in this cabin right now. I've really been enjoying my week. I hope to get this video up soon for you guys. But as always, thanks for watching. Take care. And if you have any questions about like freelance work or design work, leave them, leave them below in the comments as always. And take care. I'll see you guys next time.